Hey, what's up everybody? Happy New Year! Jake, I know I'm a couple minutes early, but uh, I want to make sure my technology is working, so I tried to log in a couple minutes here. But I will give it some time, and if you guys are, as you're joining me, please go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Let us know where you're from. Hello, hello. Go ahead and comment below so I know where you guys are from. I see my wife is on here. Hello, Carissa. Hope everybody's having an awesome Wednesday. Wednesday already. What's up, uh, Jennifer? What's up, Carol? Adrian? And I know you probably got some agents there with you, Adrian, so... Hello, everybody down there in Naples, Florida. Joe says it's working. All set. What's up, Western Upstate? Hey, Erica. Meredith, welcome. Janet, welcome. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Last time I had a little lag on my news feed here, so I couldn't read people's comments, but it looks like today it's working. Nicole is in the house from Spokane, Washington, brand new to the locker room. What's up, Nicole? Joe says, Glenn and I are here. What's up, Glenn? The better looking of the two. <laughs> Just kidding. Meredith says, hiya. Megan, hey guys, check out my shirt today, by the way. Can you guys see this? I posted it on my Facebook page. <clears throat> Listen up to your coach, those of you rebels out there who who maybe sometimes a coach starts sounding like a parent where we don't know anything but uh i promise we have your best interest in mind megan from brooklyn new york megan i know you you would appreciate my shirt come on i know you appreciate that up there in new york <clears throat> all right i'm gonna give it about uh 30 more seconds before we get going here Meredith says, truth. Adrian, what you got there? Eight here and growing. Awesome. Megan says, yes, coach. Thanks for joining us, everybody. <clears throat> Anne Marie, the ninja behind the scenes, along with Carissa for the locker room. Erica Cannon says, what up? Hello, Erica. All right, you guys, so I'm going to get started here. For those of you live with us, thank you. For those of you who might be watching this as a replay, thank you. What's up, Sophie? Um, so I thought this would be very fitting today because it's a new year. It's a new you. And a lot of people go down the road of setting goals at this time of year and New Year's resolutions. And I think that's all amazing. And I shot a video the other day. I, I never know who watches those little videos I put up in the in this nation page. But... I was kind of ranting, not ranting, but just commenting about resolutions. I think personally, I think New Year's resolutions are a little silly um, because I think for most people, for a lot of people that do them, it's almost like permission or an excuse to actually pay attention to their life and pay attention to the goals and, and get revved up for two weeks before they fall off the ladder again. And, and I'm not being critical. Um, I'm just trying to call it like it is for, for the majority of people. And most of you watching this, I know you, you're not average, so you're not the majority. But I think we can all agree, our news feeds are blowing up with all this positivity around goals in the new year. And it's like, what the hell? Why, why wouldn't we just wake up every day with that kind of enthusiasm and that approach to life where it's a fresh start? Why do I have to wait till a silly new year just because of a calendar and I can't wake up every single day with the same level of urgency, the same level of inspiration and enthusiasm about my stinking life. And so, hey, Kit, what's going on there in Greenville Drive? Carol's, Carol's down there in Bonita Springs. Hello. So anyway, so that's where it got me thinking. And <clears throat> we talk about setting goals a lot, I, you know, especially as coaches and everything. We talk about goals. But oddly enough, guys, we don't train on how to set goals. And I know that might sound weird to some of you, but if you're anything like me, where I went all along and I always knew I wanted to, to do big things, but no one really ever taught me how to set goals. And so, again, that might sound weird to you. A lot of us just grab it from thin air and say, well, hell, I don't know. That sounds good. Let's go with it. What's up, Kim? What's up, uh, Scott? Hey, Heather. All of you chiming in. Hey, Kelly. Um, 
But so if you're tracking with me here, we don't need to wait for a calendar year to hit the refresh button and say that I'm it's a new year, new me. Why not take that approach every freaking day? But again, to my point, nobody, myself included, doesn't probably, we talk about goals a lot, but we don't train specifically how to set goals a lot. And so my goal for today, hang on one second, let me get this so it doesn't make a noise on my screen. Okay, my goal for today is to share with you two different um, strategies, two different things with three steps each. So if you're watching this and you're in a position to take notes, I would highly encourage you to get something there you can take notes, okay? If not, obviously we've got the recording here, but I do intend on posting a follow-up document that'll kind of walk you through how to do what I'm about to show you today, all right? What's up, everybody? It's hard for me to keep track of the comments, so please don't feel if I'm rude for not giving you a shout-out here. But let's get started into this. So the art of writing goals, okay? This is what I, I want to talk to you about today. I think goals themselves sometimes get very mystical, uh, it's very cliche. I think it, it almost sometimes is so vague that it intimidates a lot of us on how to properly set goals. Okay, In coaching, we can take goals and chunk it down into actionable items, but starting with the goal itself, how to properly go about that. So um, first and foremost, you got to have a journal. Okay, There's something uh, special that happens when you can physically write your goals down and I mean literally, write your goals down. Don't type them. Something magical happens when you put pen to paper. A goal is just a dream or it's just a thought, and it literally does not exist in this world unless you write it down. It, it physically, literally does not exist in this world unless you write it down. Hey, what's up, Becca? Uh, hey, Michael. So you got to have a journal, right? That's number one. So here, here's the things. Um, I'm going to walk you through a series of two different things with three steps each. And this is how I personally go about setting goals. And before I get into this, I just want to share with you that I am a, a, a very authentic person. I do what I say and, and, and try to live up to that at least most of the time. And so Carissa, my wife, will even tell you that every year what I do is I write a letter to myself looking back at the highlights of this past year, what happened, and I, I put it in a, in a deal. And then I also write what my goals are for this coming year. And what I do then is I literally put it underneath my mattress and I never look at it. I never touch it until January 1st of the following year. So now every year it's pretty cool because I get to open up the one I had written to myself last year and read it. And I put silly stuff on there like what gas prices were, what the stock market was and, and all those kind of things. But then I get to uh, have a fresh start and write my future self the next note and put that back underneath the bed. So I hope that makes sense to you. So that's kind of where I'm going to go with this day, but we're going to get fairly specific on how to do this and what to do um, leading up to that. But I want you to envision, like I've already had the, the joy of, of experiencing, if you get in the habit of doing what I'm going to show you today, man, you're going to have, let's, let's, let's fast forward 10, 15 years down the road. You're basically going to have a log and a history of all these amazing accomplishments and things in your life that you, it's like a history book. And you can share it with your kids, your grandkids, or just you yourself get to reflect on it. And it gives me energy to look back on what I did with my buddy Josh back in 2006 and what I was writing. I, ha I literally have that to this day. And it's so fascinating to look back of where my mindset was and just everything as a whole and, um, and where, where life's journey takes you. So please, please, if you like what you're about to hear today, get in the habit of doing this and, and stay committed to it. All right, so let's dive in. I promised you I'm going to give you two specific things with three steps each. This is where you're going to want to maybe take some notes. All right, so um, the very first thing I want you to do, first of all, you got to have a journal so you can write it down, physically write it down. Um, the very first thing you got to do, though, is let me get my notes in front of me. Step one, you got to do a year in review. So this is where you're going to put the very first page that you open up to in this brand new journal is a year in review. And up at the top, I want you to write the best of 2017, okay? The best of 2017, very first page when you open up that journal. That's step one. Um, I don't want you to confuse this with this section of this goal exercise. It's not, this first step is not specifically to, to your goals. The best of 2017, I want you to put every single month, January, February, March, all the way to December by the month, and just reflect back 
and say, what were the memorable experiences? What happened each month that I can remember that I want to have record of and just claim that that was important to me, that was memorable to me. This is not affiliated with any previous goal that you had set, okay? I want to make that very clear distinction. It's just anything significant that happened in your life or something that you want to remember, the very first thing you do, step one, is put the best of 2017 and month by month by month list out any memorable thing that happened to you, okay? I hope that's clear. Uh, Nicole, okay, sorry, just reading your comment. Anyways, so, so that's that. Now, step number two is learn and grow. So now that you've done step one and listed out all the best of 2017, that'll take you some time. And if you do need help, let me give you this one bit of advice. Don't wait or bank on what Facebook does for us, which is like this year in review kind of thing. All that does is take the most comments or the most likes on a post and it puts it in this uh, formula, I guess. I don't know. But what you can do is go to Facebook if you really want to go to this extent. If you post as much as I do, you might not want to do it this way. But you can literally scroll backwards throughout your previous year and see what posts or things jump out at you. I know time hop is another cool thing that a lot of us have on our phones, but you'll want to do that exercise. So step number two is learn and grow. So this is where you're going to reflect on last year, 2017, you're going to reflect on the things that uh, maybe didn't go your way. Or let, I, don't, I don't like using the word failure, so let's call them temporary defeats. What did you want to accomplish, but for some reason or other you just fell short of it? That's what you're gonna do next after you've done step one, okay? You're gonna look back at the last year and say, gosh, where did I fall short? I, I said I was gonna do this, I really wanted to do that. Um, what was it? Write it down, and if you want to go to the extent of elaborating why or what got in your way, I would encourage you to do that as well. But I just want to isolate some of the things that I really sought out to do in 2017, but for some reason or other fell short. And when you've isolated those those things, you want to just kind of, this, this step two is called learn and grow, so you want to reflect and ask yourself questions and just think about these things. What did I learn from that? experience? Was it something I, I said I wanted to do, but comes out, it wasn't really that important to me, right? So what, what could I learn from that? How can I grow from some of those temporary defeats? And I think most important of all, now looking forward in 2018, if it's still something you want to accomplish, say, what can I do differently moving forward? So whatever prevented me from achieving that in 2017, I don't repeat that same mistake. See, I think a lot of us get caught up in the Groundhog Day cycle of things where it's just the same thing day after day, week after week, month after month, year over year, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. But if you, we've all heard this, right? If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. So that's, that's step number two. Step number one, your interview, write down the best of. Month by month, some months you'll have a ton of things in there. Some months you might only have one or two. That's okay. There's no judgment. This is for you. Step number two is learn and grow. You're going to write down the things that you fell short on. They were temporary defeats. You just didn't accomplish them yet. Write those down. Step number three is this. I want you to transfer over the goals you did achieve. So let's say in 2017 you wanted to run a 5K. You wanted to close 30 homes and whatever. And you did it. Well, I want you to take those from your last year's journal or if this is your first time doing it, start now, and put them into the first page of your brand new journal. So I want to win, I want to, I'm sorry, end on the wins and successes and, and focus on a high note versus the previous exercise, which was fo more focused on what can I learn and grow from so I can be better moving forward. Does that make sense? I hope so. So transfer your goals over that you did achieve from last year. Um, Ideally, as you're doing this, here's a little nugget <coughs> that I'm getting to next. When you write your new goals, I want you to put a little little box, just literally draw a little square next to each one of them because there's something special that happens when you can check that box. Just the physical act of um, that sense of accomplishment, you know, that you get when you can boop, put a little check next to that box. So if you've done this before, this is your moment to put a check in that box and then move it over into your new year, your new journal. All right. So um, 
like I said before, this is where I want you to focus on the wins. We're going to end on a high energy, positivity note here. And then score yourself. So look back. Let's say you've got 15 goals that were really, really important to you for 2017, and you achieved eight of them. I don't know. Well, cool. It's not a pass-fail. It's not a judgment thing. It's not good or bad. But you can say you finished a little over 50% of your goals that you set out to accomplish. That's awesome, right? I mean, what would have happened if you didn't write them down or you didn't set those goals? Might have been a goose egg. Or we might not have been able to score it at all. But all I want you to do is take your goals from last year. If, if you set some goals last year, some of you, this might be the first time you're doing it. And just say, all right, now, how can I grade myself? What percentage of my goals did I achieve? And we've already isolated the ones that um, were temporary defeats or I had not yet achieved yet. And I can assess why, what happened, what I can do differently moving forward. All right, so that's, that's the first set of two different things that have three components each. If there's any comments or questions on that, please let me know. But um, just to recap, step one, brand new journal, first page in that journal. You're going to do a year in review. Have fun with this, you guys. I want you to put January, February, March, all the way to December. And just truly think back. If you have a, a spouse or a loved one, ask them. Do this together. So you can look back and say what memorable or what important events happened in our lives or did, did we get a, a certain award or recognition, okay? Put it in, in the month that it occurred and that way you have a history and a log and something you can years down the road look back and share with your kids or grandkids or whatever is important to you and I promise you uh, it's pretty neat if you think this is kind of hokey pokey stuff, it's pretty neat down the road when you're able to look back at that. So that's step number one. Step number two was learn and grow. We're going to look at the, the areas where we fell short of our goal and, and ask ourselves really important questions. What you can do differently moving forward. What you can learn from that temporary defeat. right? And then the third step was transfer last year's goals that you did hit. Write them down in your new year journal. And, um, and then grade yourself. right? What areas... Um, or I'm sorry, what percentage of your overall goals did you hit? I recently did this. It was fascinating, you guys. Um, some of you that have been friends with me on Facebook might remember this, but last uh, January, I was actually down in Florida uh, with my family. We had met all down there for Christmas, with all, everybody. And I distinctly remember sitting out on the balcony in a journal doing my 2017 goals. And some of them were crazy, some of them were, were just kind of silly and probably were gonna happen anyways, but I wrote it all down. There was no judgment behind it. And I, I will admit to you, I lost the journal and I didn't know where the heck it was, but I recently found it. And I'll be doggone if, uh, what was the, I think it was 74% of the goals that I wrote down, if, if we didn't achieve them. And some of them were like out there a little bit. Some of them I didn't hit, and that's okay too, but um, I was really amazed thinking like just the laws of attraction or whatever your belief system is that I had taken the time with a lot of thought and purpose behind it, and I like to believe that my subconscious mind was at work all, all year long because those were things in my heart and in my mind that were important to me, and now that I had the chance to find that journal that I had previously lost and see how I did, it was absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. So, all right. Next thing is, hang on, I gotta scroll down in my notes. Not like I'm using these notes anyways, I'm just talking at you, but give me one second. All right, now that we've looked backwards in your journal, I'm still in your journal, gotta write these things down. Now it's our time to look forward, okay? So you're gonna flip a couple pages or so and do this next exercise. This is the second one with three different components to it. Here you go. So for 2018, and some of you, if you haven't set your goals yet, dude, you should have done this like back in October, November, first of all. But that's okay. That's okay. There's no judgment. Um, here's your 2018 action plan for goal setting. Here's the first step. First step is to goal storm. Like we know, like brainstorming, right? I want you to goal storm. This is literally where I just want you to be in a quiet place, no distractions. Some of you, that's an environment, maybe at the beach or overlooking uh, a mountain, I don't know. Some of you, that's maybe just in, in, your, in your home office with an inspirational music playing in the background, but you gotta get in the zone, people. You gotta get in the zone. So, goal storm. No judgment. Nobody's looking over your shoulder. This is what I want you to write down and have fun with. Some of you, this is gonna be challenging. 
If you want it to occur in your lifetime, write it down. Don't worry about deadlines, don't worry about time frames, just write it down. If you want to experience it, have it, do it, give it away, whatever it may be, I want you to take this goal storm activity and just write, write. I want you to fill up pages upon pages of things. And I'm going to challenge you most of the times, excuse me, I'll get to upwards of 75, maybe 100 items. And But for you, you may fly past that. Some of you end up with 10, 15, 20. I don't know your number, but don't let there be any be limiting beliefs behind this exercise, okay? And this should take you some time. This should take you a little bit of time if you do this the right way. No limits. No time frame, no judgment, just write, have a goal storm session with yourself. All right. So um, write down as many as you can. And then step number two is going to be categorize them. So now that you've got all these pages or long list of items that you want to experience or have or you get it, now we have to categorize them. I'm going to challenge you to come up with five or six categories if you can. Um, but I'm going to go through and find the commonality so I can take this goal and place it under finance. I can take this goal and place it under health. I can take that goal and place it over here under business, whatever it may be. I'm not going to tell you what your what your category should be. It's kind of like, you know, we've done that wheel of life exercise. It's kind of like the spokes on a wheel. Here's the hub, that's you, and all these spokes on the wheel come off of it, and they're all intertwined and attached at the end of the day. So I'm not going to tell you what your category should be, but here's some examples. You may have finance, you may have business, you may have spiritual, health, maybe philanthropy or something like that. You want to give and, 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 and serve others. Um, family, travel and entertainment, whatever it is, we're going to group them, everything that you wrote down, we're going to group them into certain categories. And I want you to aim for five or six. You can have more than that if you need to, but that would be the ideal amount. All right, so once you've categorized them, hi, Mary Lou, what's up, Mark, from Western Upstate? Um, so now that you've categorized them, here's the third step, the final final step for this. This is the hardest one. If you thought the goal storming, some of you, that'll be your hardest, you think that's your hardest part until you get to here. Step number three is out of all of them, I want you to pick your top five or ten that can happen and should happen this year. Because remember, let's go back to the goal, goal storm session there was no time frame. I don't care if that was 2030. Maybe you want to go to uh, outer space and realistically, you know, as you're writing these things down, that's not going to happen this year, but it doesn't mean it shouldn't still be written down and it can't happen someday. All right, so in the goal storming, that's the difference. Just, just let it go. If you want to do it or experience it or have it, write it down. But step number three here, we're going to extract the top five or ten that you can conquer this year and that are most important to you, okay? These have the most uh, importance, influence, uh, biggest impact on your life. It's almost kind of like Gary Keller's question in the One Thing book, which is what's the one thing I can do right now such that by doing it would make everything else easier or unnecessary? So this is kind of like the One Thing question out of pages and, and maybe a 100 goals that you had written down, pick the top five or 10, that you're gonna really focus on and commit to for this year, all right? So um, I'm telling you, <laughs> this is hard for me because the problem with most of us is we wanna do them all. We wanna do them all right now. But I can either be good at a whole bunch of things or I can be great on a select few. And the purpose of this exercise is to get your mind thinking and just get it all out on paper so it exists, but now to revisit them, categorize them, and maybe put a circle or a star next to the ones that are really, really most important to you, and you want to do it this year. I don't want to wait till 2030 to do that, okay? So this takes time, you guys. Um, when I say time, if you do this the right way, I hope you're sitting down. Some of you might find, might find this as a shocker. If you do this the right way, it could easily take you, I don't know, eight to 10 hours, seriously. So for some of you, like when you're setting your CGI goals, it's in a matter of a 30-minute coaching session. You're like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I want to make $100,000. Sure. Look, your life is too damn important. It deserves more than 30 minutes with a coach. You hear me? This should take easily 8 to 10 hours if you do this the right way and actually put thought into it and take pride in this and really 
think through and map out your vision. I want you to future pace the heck out of this thing. All this together should take 8 to 10 hours by the time you start and finish. And some of you are like, really? Yeah, really, really. This is your life, people. You can't just take one day a year called New Year's Day or New Year's Eve and come up with a resolution and hope that it happens. Hope is not a strategy, right? This is your life. you got to plan this out. Some of you get more excited about a freaking football game than you do about your life goals. And so I'm here to tell you, this is a system that's worked for me. This was taught to me, and it changed my life. It changed the way I go about setting goals. Because we talk about them, like I said at the start of this, but rarely does anybody ever teach or, or coach or train on how to set goals. So if you like this, I would encourage you to implement it immediately because your life depends on it, people. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I shot this video the other day, and if my wife is still watching, um, oops, I just kicked it, is I just spent New Year's Day. I was just got back from uh, the Midwest. I'm originally from Illinois, but we went to Iowa. We drove an hour and a half to see my wife's grandma who's in a nursing home. She's not doing well at all with her health. And I'm sitting across this table from this woman who, you know, to put it bluntly, is she's dying right in front of our eyes. She's dying. And we're talking, and, and about every two minutes, her memory is just gone, and she's asking the same questions. And it just hit me, you guys, like, what are we doing? What are we doing with this life? Are we just pissing it away? Or are we actually caring enough about ourselves, our future, and the generations beyond us to leave an impact in a, in a, in a footprint on this world that's something of significance? What are you chasing? That was the title of the video I just shot the other day. What are you chasing, and why are you chasing it? Some of you are out there saying, I want to, I want to you know, start this big meg agent team. Well, why? Some of you are saying, I want to earn a half million dollars or become the next millionaire. Real why? Why do you want those things? Because it's not easy. And probably what you're going to find is you can have everything you want in this life with a whole lot of headache and a whole lot less work if you're willing to get over your own ego and pride because all of a sudden you just want to see your name on a ranking. Or you want to be considered one of the top teams in your market center. Well, what does that matter? Because I can sh tell you the, the, the legacy that woman left on my wife and her family is far more important than any career or job or accolade that she ever had. And it, it set me back as I'm sitting across the table from her thinking, my God, what life do I want to live so I can lead a life of significance and leave an impact on the, on the people that are around me so that's what I'm remembered by. I, I mean, this success thing is great as long as it's attached to a big why that funds your perfect life. If you're doing it just for ranking and recognition, forget it. That's, that's empty, right? But if it's attached to providing an amazing life for yourself, your kids, your family, then awesome. Go make all the money in the world. Run that big team if you want to run a big team. That's great. That's done for the right reasons but it's not the right reasons, and I'm just going to challenge your mindset as you're going through these goals. What do you really want in this life? Because it's going to be over in a blink of an eye, you guys. It's not promised to any one of us. And when I can see that woman sitting across the table from my wife and I and have those conversations and see the impact that she had on her family, it shook me. And it made me think, what do I want to leave as my legacy for my kids and grandkids and their future generations? Right? So here, here's how I'm going to leave this. I told you this process, if done correctly, should take 8 to 10 hours. I mean, really, truly, from start to finish. Because you're going to review, you're going to create the goals, you're going to review the goals, you're going to narrow those goals down, and then the planning happens. All this isn't done. You've got to take this and put it into a 135 and a 411 goal setting exercise. The work's not done. Okay? But I can promise you this if you don't take the time and treat your life as it's a priority and put yourself first in a lot of these ways, there's a boss out there somewhere in the real world who's doing this goal setting exercise. He's doing it. And he's trying to figure out how he can use you to achieve his, his bucket list, his live list, his goals. I promise you that. So if you're not going to take the time, somebody else is taking the time for you. And you might be a part of their puzzle piece instead of part of your own. Bringing the heat today. All right. So, um, so to recap, here it is, guys. To recap, two sets of of three steps. The first one is review your last year. All this is done in a journal. Review your last year. Review what went wrong or those temporary defeats and what you can learn from it and fix so it doesn't happen again next time. 
And then the last one on that part is do a goal checklist of all the things that you had previously written down and all the things that you actually achieved from that list. So that's the first set. The second set is this. You're going to do a goal storm session. No judgment, no timelines, no nothing. Just let your mind wander. If you want to live it, experience it, and give it away, make it, have it, whatever, write it down. The next thing you're going to do once you've done that is put them into categories, ideally five or six or so, and, um, and take those goals and place them in categories. Once they're categorized, you're going to go back through and you're going to circle or star or highlight the ones, the top five to ten-ish, that mean the most to you. The three I's, the most important, the most impact, the most influence over everything else. Okay, so let's say you want to run a marathon, and on your, on, somewhere on your list you also wrote down that you want to run up that big hill. Well, I would choose the marathon because running up the hill might happen because of my commitment to running the marathon. Right? So, that's that. Now, here's the last and final thought, I promise you, and then I'll shut up, is if you do these exercises, my comment to you is you're on track. You're on track to hitting your goals. It doesn't guarantee you success. It doesn't mean you're going to have everything you wrote down. I'm not, I'm not a magician, okay? But you're on track. And that's such an advantage over most people who aren't watching this video, and they're just going through life like it's a dress rehearsal. At least you're on the right track, and you've taken step number one of writing goals down and planning and putting some thought into them. You with me? All right. So I believe success comes down to three things. Goals, strategies, and action. Goals, strategies, and action. That's it. So by doing this kind of an exercise, you've at least done step one. But now you have to take them and do step two, which is strategize. That's a one, three, five. That's your four, one, one. You can do that with your coach. Okay. And then step three is action. Massive freaking action. Consistent action. Day in, day out. Do the boring stuff, the mundane stuff. I don't care if you don't like it. You do it anyways because it's attached to a bigger vision and a promising future for yourself. And I can assure you it's worth it. So get out of your own way, go do it anyways, and yeah, you'll have fun doing it. I promise you, your food's going to taste better, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or whatever is going to look better, all right? It, it, everything is better when you're winning, I don't care what you say. So anyways, pay attention to the scoreboard, that's what we do, and ask of you to track your numbers. I get blue in the face, I'm sick and tired of reminding agents to report their numbers every week too, trust me, but I care enough about you and your success that I'm willing to be the jerk who has to say, look, if you don't report your numbers, we're not going to coach together anymore. I'm okay with that because I want to work with the people who are really committed to something, a goal, whether that's capping or not capping, I don't care, but I want to help you get what you want to out of this life. And if you're ready to take it and treat it as much of a priority as I am, then I'll meet you right where you're at. And we're going to have a great coaching relationship with it together. But if not, I can't help you. And probably I'm speaking on behalf of all the other locker room coaches on here. We don't know how to help you. All right, so congratulations, you guys. I will post something about this, kind of an easy to follow step-by-step -step process. Hopefully you took some notes, um, but congratulations. Once you complete this, you've at least done the first step. Now you just gotta strategize and take crazy, stupid, ridiculous action. That's it, don't make this harder than it is. I love you guys, Locker Room Nation. Thank you so much for all that you do. Let's make this an absolutely incredible 2018 for no one else. Oh, here's one more thing. I mentioned this in my other video, but while I have a captive audience, I'm going to bring it up again. The other day, I want you all to read this book. Listen to it. It's called The Top 5 Regrets of the Dying. That is literally the name of the book, The Top 5 Regrets of the Dying. You need to read this. The second one on that list is they wish they wouldn't have worked so much. The first one on that list is they wish they would have lived a more authentic life instead of trying to live up to the expectations of other people. This is literally a nurse who asked this question to people on their deathbeds and she came up with these top five regrets of the dying. Game changer. Put life in perspective. Get over yourself. Get out of your own way. Go take the necessary action needed to hit your goals, whatever that may be. And do these exercises to gain clarity on what those things are. All right.
I got to wrap it up. I think I have a coaching appointment in here. I heard a knock on the door. So I got to run. Thank you guys so much. Hope you found this valuable. If you did, comment below. Let me know what you took away from this. I do value your feedback. So I'll check you guys later. Thank you.